And now to figure out a better algorithm, um, I have a student, Anshu Ni, who worked, who had an ingenious method. And the method I'm going to describe is based on the concept of Lyapunov exponents. To tell you the Lyapunov exponents, um, I'm going to first uh, I describe under the concept of if I have an ODE, D, U, D, T for the F of U. And I look at an epsilon infinitesimal perturbation to the solution. So if I perturb U by epsilon times D, how does this D change as a function of time? So the people have proved that this kind of small perturbation is V. They either grow or decay exponentially over a long time. And lambda can be uniquely defined also as an infinite time limit. Also, depending on V of zero, the initial condition of the perturbation, the lambda can take different values. In that sense, there is a spectrum of different lambdas for a same system, each corresponding to a different V. These lambdas, the distinct lambdas, are called the Lyapunov exponents. It forms a spectrum. The corresponding V are called the covariant Lyapunov vectors, or the, or, the, or the modes in the linearized system. You can think of lambda as eigenvalues and the corresponding V as eigenvectors of a matrix. It's really a generalized version of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, depending on what the spectrum is, a system can be classified as steady, periodic, or chaotic. A steady system, all the lambdas are negative, which means any perturbations you can make to the system, they decay to zero. For periodic system, there is exactly a zero lambda. The zero lambda corresponds to the perturbation along the direction of evolution. Think of it if you have two CFD solvers running. One is always one time step ahead of the other. And the one that is one time step ahead of the other is always going to stay one time step ahead of the other. Right? So, so the difference between them is not going to decay nor grow on average. That's periodic. For chaotic simulations for dynamics, there is at least one Lyapunov exponent that is positive, which means exponential growth. That's what we have been observing. That's causing all the problems. The ingenious solution is, uh, do I have this again? OK, so, so, so we can actually calculate. There are good algorithms out there to calculate the rate of growth. So this is, for example, for the say, uh, NASA double two airfoil vortex shedding at 20 degrees angle of attack, we can compute the first 16 moles and look at how fast they grow. So this is actually the magnitude of these moles. There is one that grows is very fast. There is another one that grows on every very slowly. And then all the rest decay, which means the system, chaotic system, has two positive Lyapunov exponents. And all the others are negative. So that allows us to be able to Tune the initial condition under a parameter perturbation along these two unstable directions to make it stable. So the solution is basically to only look at what perturbations you can make in the initial condition along these unstable directions. And my student proved that by just perturbing along these unstable directions, you can always make shadowing solutions. You don't have to perturb the initial condition on these stable directions. You only need to perturb in the unstable directions. So that actually reduced the cost of the algorithm by looking at that uh, a lot. And now the cost of the algorithm is not orders of magnitude larger than the primal system. It is still larger than the primal system by a factor of how many of these unstable modes there are. In this case, we actually get a pretty cheap algorithm because there are only two unstable modes. And we compute the sensitivities that are pretty much in agreement with the, uh, in this case, we actually have an analytical uh, derivation of what 
it should be the derivative of the dependent drag to increasing the Mach number. Uh, basically, kind of a low Mach number assumption. 